Hello YouTube, on this video we're going to be talking about oils in a sense, but really going to be talking about cam break-in. It's a very important subject, especially on a flat tapper cam, but all cams need to go through a break-in process, um, even a roller cam. Um, here we have, you may have heard of this, a three-quarter cam. Um, this is the half a cam. Um, slight joke it's just for, for display purposes but we have a flat tappet um, should we start off top bottom what's flat tappet what's hydraulic uh, what's roller um, is that the kind of video we need to be we may need to be that, that kind of video so a flat tappet or a solid has a lifter that looks just like this and basically it goes back to the model a the model t and it's pretty primitive um it's called flat tappet because it basically sits pretty flat and as it spins the low pushes the lifter up pushing the push rod pushing the valve down on a flathead it'd be just pushing the valve up but basically can you hear that that's metal on metal people and that's the way that it was designed and that's the way it goes then we have a roller lifter. I'm probably wondering what's a roller lifter? Should have had this already out and could have speeded it up, but here we are. So this is a roller lifter. Um, on a roller lifter, uh, one of the key things is gonna give it away is there's gonna be a tie bar setup or some way to keep the lifters connected. And the reason being is at the bottom, we have a roller. So we actually have a roller bearing. Now we don't have, I'm not saying there's no friction because there is friction, but it isn't friction like a mechanical flat tappet. So now on the camshaft, we actually have a roller. So as it spins, it goes up and down, but on a roller. So we don't have as much friction. The reason that we need a tie bar to connect them together or some kind of hold down that keeps them from spinning is because if there's a roller at the bottom, the lifter cannot turn or it would just ruin the roller. On a flat tappet camshaft, the opposite. This lifter must always be spinning. As it's going up and down, it's always spinning. People don't realize that the edge of the camshaft, it's not actually at a perfect 90 parallel to the block or the camshaft itself. It is slightly, maybe a half a degree, it's not a lot, but it's slightly kicked over. So as it's going up and down, it puts more of a, a pressure on one side than hitting completely flat. What does that do? If I got more pressure on one side than the other and I'm going around, it's actually gonna spin the lifter. So as it's moving up and down and rotating, the lifter's spinning. A tip when you're assembling the motor is, when you put it in there, if the lifter doesn't just drop in, I've been at plenty of shops, they don't understand why they're flattening cams out. One of the things is, they think you can push the lifter in, it's good enough. Once it rides, it'll loosen up on its own. No, that ain't happening. This needs to spin. As I'm assembling a motor, I'm turning it over, and I'll even put a mark on the push rod or the lifter, and as you're turning this over, adjusting the valves, you'll see them all moving. If you have one that's not moving, you better stop, pull the lifter out, pull the rocker, pull the lifter out, and find out what's going on. More than likely, there's something holding it. There's something holding it. You may think, golly, it's not very much. It's enough. Because in the cam breaking process, we want this puppy just spinning around as soon as it fires off. We don't have the time to effort to wear. What's gonna happen? It's gonna wear the bottom. It's gonna wear the bottom. If this is always spinning, it can't really wear the bottom in one spot, can it? It's always spinning as it's going around and it's spinning and it's uniformly wearing the whole piece. If this sits for a few milliseconds and the cam goes up and down and it doesn't turn, it's already worn a spot into it. It ain't gonna rotate anymore. So you're already damaging the cam just in turning the motor over and firing it off. So we want to make sure that in a flat tappet cam, the lifters move perfectly smooth, easy, with no effort at all. Tip of the day, put a line on it as you're doing the valves before the intake is on and you're adjusting your valves and you're turning it over, you'll watch, they'll turn. If they're not turning, stop. It's much easier to figure it out now than put it in the car, flatten the cam out, send metal throughout the whole engine, and then have rod bearings and main bearings to go as well. Okay, so 
I have to kind of get you a little bit of an insight of what a flat tappet and, and a solid lifter cam is and a, and a hydraulic. Um, we haven't even discussed a solid and a hydraulic. Hydraulic has a plunger inside and a piston and it's self-adjusting, they say. We'll talk lifter preload. That'll be another video. Hit the like, subscribe. Give me some comments if you want to see lifter preload. I think it's very important. That's another video. On a solid, there is no lifter preload. It's a solid piece of metal and you have clearance. You have valve lash. That's a solid. Uh, hydraulic, you're gonna put preload. Once again, this is another video on how to adjust valves. Hopefully I'll get some feedback and we'll do a lifter preload video. This isn't a lifter preload video and kind of just giving you a little bit of a, uh, an insight on what's a solid, a hydraulic, and a roller. A roller can be solid or hydraulic. This is a solid roller. It's solid. It's basically a solid piece of metal with a fluid roller at the bottom or a spinning roller, however you want to call it. Um, but it's, it's a solid piece of metal. Um, they do make hydraulic rollers. We want to get that. A lot of cars these days all have hydraulic rollers. So now that we know what the, what the difference is on, on the difference of camshafts, now the importance of cam break-in. Um, you do not want to do a cam break-in with a regular awl. Here's two different awls. What's the difference of these two awls? They look the same um, on a break-in awl read the back of it what's going to be a breaking oil is not going to be high in detergents the worst thing you want on a breaking oil is a high detergent oil what's the one common thing that all oils on most auto parts shelves have you're right high detergent so thinking you can add some zinc into your oil um and now you're gonna have a expensive oil. Instead of buying a high dollar oil, I'm just gonna buy an additive and add it to it. If you add it to a high detergent oil, um, how do you remove dirt from your clothes? Detergents. How do you remove zinc from your parts? You got it, high detergent oil. So you want a non-detergent oil for break-in. Pretty hard to find these days, isn't it? Go out there and try to look, see if you can find yourself a non-detergent oil. They're getting harder and harder to find. Everything is high detergent because everything these days is made with a roller lifter and it's made with a hydraulic roller. We have variable cam timing. We have a lot of little bitty oil holes that are controlling everything on an engine these days. So we want a high detergent oil that's gonna keep the parts clean. What's the key? It's roller. I'm not saying that a roller motor doesn't need zinc as well, but that's how they got away with it. So that being said and i'm not saying that you can't do that find you some non-detergent straight 30 weight oil add some of this into it and it should work i shouldn't say it should work lewis from hill country car culture magazine for three years now has been using non-detergent oil with additive he did his cam braking he did everything and it's working perfectly fine so uh, um there's no one answer for everybody it is working for him we use a zinc uh, um, oil uh, for break-in. Um, I um, suggest that. Um, here is a driven, Joe Gibbs driven oil. If you read on it, it says break-in oil. What does it have? Um, it is as ZZ, ZDDP formulated for cam break-in. It's high in zinc, um, sp specific for cam break-in. Here is the AMS oil, which we use in uh, um, also a lot a majority of about 90 percent of our high-end engines were always going to be broken in with the amsoil break-in um high zinc oil you're going to break it in with a break-in oil not a conventional high detergent oil when you do a cam break-in as soon as the motor fires off it needs to go to 2000 rpms for 20 minutes um, i'm going to take you to the back in a little bit and show you um, how to do a cam break-in we uh, i'm going to show you a cam break-in on an amc american motors amx motor um, and we're doing a proper cam break-in 20 minutes in the cam break-in process if you have an oil leak or a water leak that's that's actually a lot is go ahead and stop it but if it's just a drip go ahead and finish your 20 minute cam break-in as soon as this starts off we want 2000 rpms right off of idle don't let it sit there for five or ten minutes while you look at the motor adjust the carburetor or set the timing on this particular cam break-in i'm breaking in on a brand new holly that i use to do cam break-ins on 
It's already set, it's adjusted, I know there's no problems. As soon as it fires off, I know we're gonna have the right air fuel mixture. After the cam break in, I'll idle it down, we'll do our tuning, we'll let it heat soak, I'll pull the carburetor off, then we put on the original carburetor, which has been um, rebuilt, and then we'll do our tuning on the carburetor. I got plenty of time now. The cam has been broken in. So, very important, your, your timing is right, your carburetor is right, because you're going for 2,000 RPMs for 20 minutes. It seems like eternity. Um, I'll show you the, the, the cam break-in. We even had a little issue. We blew off a hose. That will happen. In a break-in, we're gonna have higher coolant temperatures. Sometimes as high as 40 degrees higher, 20 to 30, 40 degrees higher of coolant temperature. And you're probably wondering, why is that? I don't know, are you wondering that? Why is that? Friction, people. We're breaking in the cam. We have friction. We have 16 uh, lifters that are trying to mate. Um, they're just, they just got introduced to each other. We're trying to get them to mate and there's a lot of heat involved there. You probably know what I'm talking about. So the excessive heat from the break-in, it's okay and break-in. Once the motor's broken in, the temperature will drop down. So you will see higher temperatures uh, in our initial break-in. And for about the first week of engine running, um, depending on if we're building a tight clearance motor or a loose motor for drag racing. It's a totally different environment, but you will have higher temperatures at the beginning. When we were doing this cam break-in, it blew a hose off of it. It blew the hose off, off the stand. That's okay. We shut it off. I stopped the clock. We went ahead and uh, let it heat soak. I put hot water back in it, let it heat soak once again, fired it back up and finished our cam break in. Things like that are gonna happen. That's okay. Shut it off, fix whatever happened and fire it back up again to 2000 RPMs and finish your cam break in. After cam break in, um, then you can idle it down. Um, I'll set the timing really quick. I got my timing light there. It's static set. When I assemble the motor, I set the, the, the rotor in position, aiming at the number one, and I don't wanna say pretty much, but every time it fires right off and I'm within a degree or two. Um, we degree everything when we're setting it up. I even degree the harmonic balancer. So I'm pretty much on the money. I have my timing like there, you, you'll see. I fire it, I hit the button, it's where I want it, six to eight degrees initial, then I take it up um, to 2,000 RPMs. While it's up at 2,000 RPMs, my heart is beating as fast as it can. It doesn't matter how many of these we've done. Um, it's just exciting and you're, you know, 2,000 RPMs, like I said, 20 minutes on a brand new motor. Uh, um, it seems like it's an hour. Um, but while it's running there, I'm looking at the exhaust pipe. If the exhaust on your engine, it starts getting really, really hot, your timing is retarded. Advance it a little bit. You can sit there and listen to the motor. I don't, I don't want to use the, uh, the word common sense. Um, I've talked about this before, and that's a we're not going to talk about that right now because everybody has different common sense. But me, I've been doing this for a long time. If I notice my exhaust is starting to get cherry red, getting hot, I can see. I know my timing is a little retarded, and I can advance it right there. I'm not going to put it to idle and use my timing light. I'm going to use my ear, and I can tell when the motor's loading up. I can tell when the motor doesn't like it. So what I want to do is I want to turn my timing to have the motor be as smooth as possible without any uh, added load on it right now. Okay, uh, also again, we don't want it lean. We don't want to burn out, uh, burn out a cylinder because the carb doesn't have enough fuel. That's why I use a brand new carb that I use for cam break-ins. Um, after the cam broke it in and you idle it back down again, we like to do an oil change, get rid of that. You're gonna have a lot of metal in the oil filter. By metal, I don't mean shavings of metal. I mean, it's gonna be dark because you're, once again, breaking in a cam means I'm wearing this part and this part together and I'm mating the two. All right, y'all stop that. So once that's done, the oil is out, um, we'll go ahead and do an oil change and then I'll, I'll finish my tuning on, on the motor. It'll be on the stand for several days while we adjust the valves, while we're checking for leaks, we're checking everything. Um, we're going pulling the covers back off again. We're going to go ahead and adjust the valves. I'm going to drain that oil and then we're going to go ahead and go to a hot rod oil. A hot rod oil. This isn't a, a commercial for oil. Um, while I do have two of the best oils that I think out there are excellent oils and you're not gonna have a failure. If you have a failure using this stuff up here, um, you did something wrong. It's not the oil's fault. It's not the oil's fault. We've never lost the camshaft. We've been here eight years. I don't have to knock on wood because it's not uh, by luck. Um, so we have a conventional hot rod oil and we have a synthetic Z rod oil. Z, zinc, hot rod oil, zinc, 
Both of them are going to have zinc. Um, you don't have to go synthetic. You can go petroleum. A lot of times, if it's a flathead, I've tried to force feed a flathead with synthetic. It didn't like it. Um, so learn your engine and see what it likes. But a conventional oil or a synthetic oil are two uh, beautiful oils on the market. Also, don't think it's once you did a cam break and that's it. For the rest of its life, for eternity for that motor, it is going to use a hot rod oil. Yes, that's right. You're going to spend ten dollars a bottle, whatever it costs. I don't buy the stuff. I just uh, I just put it in the motors um, for the rest of its life. You're not going to be able to use regular oil anymore. You can, and you're going to flatten the cam. Once it's broken in, it's still always going to need high zinc. Um, here's where I suggest a roller cam. Put a roller cam in, and you're done. Um, now we don't have to worry about having special oils. You can use any oil. I still recommend a good oil. Um, you're going to build a thirty, forty thousand dollar motor, and you're going to put in, you know, three dollar oil. You can do whatever you want, and we've had some weird things. But so don't be fooled in thinking that a roller cam can't use zinc as well. It can. All right, we'll take you out back, and we're going to show you um, how to do a proper cam break-in. Let's go. Okay. An example of a cam break-in. We popped the lower hose. Everything's still okay. Nobody's hurt. We'll move on. We'll tighten the hose up, let it cool down, and then we'll finish the cam break-in. I'm getting sidetracked again, but like I said, leave me a comment. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me if I'm wasting your time and I'm boring you. I don't know, but uh, tell your buddies, tell your friends, tell your mom, tell your dad. Don't forget your cats and dogs, um, your neighbor's cats and dogs. All right, as for me, I'm getting back to work. I hope you all enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.